I'm Jay Kingley, co-founder and CEO of Maven, your host of Fractionals Unplugged. I'm joined today by Russell Lukadu, a fractional chief HR officer, also known as a fractional CHRO. Russell works with small business owners to enhance their leadership and communication skills in a manner that creates an environment of success. He helps owners who have been successful and reach the point where they have to hire people and aligns them with the business owner's goals for their company. Russell is based in Los Angeles, California. Welcome, Russell. Hey, Jay, thanks for having me. It's, I'm looking forward to this. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. Welcome to Fractionals Unplugged, a podcast from Maven. You left the corporate world to build your own fractional executive business by infusing your intellectual property into all aspects of your revenue generation. Maven enables you to earn in excess of $500,000 per year and more as you scale. Imagine a pipeline so full that prospects who value what you do will be the ones knocking on your door. Jay Kingley, the CEO of Maven and his guests share their insight on how you can get out of struggle city and into success city and beyond. Enjoy today's episode. Russell, let's say I'm the owner of a small managed data services provider. I've been growing nicely, but now I'm personally tapped out and need to bring on staff to support my existing customers and allow me to continue to grow. We bump into each other at a local networking event. Now mm -hmm. you've got a maximum of 60 seconds to give me your elevator pitch. Go. Jay, what you're facing is something a lot of successful business owners get. They have their dream, their passion, whatever it is you're working on, and all of a sudden you've exploded with success. Hiring people, as you know, is one of the biggest decisions a small business owner makes. There's nothing more important than getting the right people on your team. So I will work with you and find out what your needs are, what your preferences are, and help you work on a selection process and a hiring process that gets you the best possible talent you can get. I'm going to use the marketing lingo, ICP. That stands for your ideal client profile. So I want you to talk about your ICPs and what do you look for when you meet them? My ideal client profile is that business owner with probably two or three employees that wants to grow and they have the, the good product, the good service. And so they're set to go. They um, will work with a lot of people, including a lot of hires, sometimes contractors. And I work with them to, to ferret through what that means, how to get it done right, so they don't get into any legal issues. But more importantly, the people that they're working with are excited about working with you and pulling in the same direction. So what are the pain points that your ICPs are struggling to resolve? I, I think they've been burned by hiring. Quite frankly, that's yeah. the biggest one. And they, they thought, I have two premises, Jay. One is that you hire the right person. And secondly, that that person wants to be successful. I don't know many people who on day one come in to make their boss mad or to mess up. So when you get that person, you thought you had the perfect hire, two, three weeks, maybe two, three months into the process, you're pulling your hair out. This person's getting paid by me to do something and they're not. And their pain is how can I get them either to straighten up and fly right or to get out of my organization without incurring all the the, the turbulence that can be created by terminating somebody incorrectly. There are right and wrong ways to do that, but I like to prevent that. I love uh, the quote by Patrick Lencioni, firing is the final act of cowardice that I have gotten so bad that I have, and I haven't confronted people and I haven't worked with them, but I just pull my hair out. They're not doing what I want them to do. So instead of waiting and being ready to fire them, you get change. Because change is either they do what you want them to do and do it enthusiastically, or they change companies. You don't fire them, they quit. So the pain is you've been burned by the hire or you've been burned by people who just aren't doing what they're supposed to do. And it's frustrating. It's the thing you wake up at four o'clock in the morning going, oh, my employees are driving me nuts. And that's what I want to work with these business owners and say, you don't need to do that. You're going to bet my business is running swimmingly. And I don't have to worry if I have the right people. And that's a beautiful thing. Well, I think that the pain points you're talking about is almost ubiquitous 
among small businesses. In fact, when I've worked with small businesses and you ask the owner, what is the thing that you dislike most about running your own business? It almost always is having to deal with staff and all those issues that you allude to. And the other thing I'll offer is when you have failure after failure in terms of the people you're hiring, and mm -hmm. as the owner, you keep pointing the finger at them. Yes. Uh, you need to put a mirror in between you and look at the person who you're now pointing the finger at, because that is where the problem starts. Pain is that top performer who does so in a manner that's toxic and nobody wants to work with them. They get it done, but they do so in a manner that bowls over the client needs, bowls over their teammates needs, bowl over my direction. They're getting things done, they're producing, but they do it in a manner that is just toxic, it's best word. And those toxic employees are the other pain point. What do I do to turn them around? Right, because they may be toxic, but they're also high performers. They're so high performer toxic employees. You right. think of a vampire. You're in this dilemma of you love their output, but you're not too thrilled, if you will, with their input. Yeah. So what outcomes can these ideal clients of yours expect when they get rid of the pain points you talked about? They live the dream. They, they, they have a business that's running without them having to touch every lever, push every button, make every phone call because they have people pulling in the same direction so they can go on about other things in their life. They can maintain that balance in their life that they wanted. And they started before they started their own business. If you have a nine to five, you unplug and go home. Pay attention to your family. When you own a business, you don't unplug ever. You're always focusing on what's next, what's new. And if you're spending so much time cleaning up messes, you never get to innovate. You never get to grow. And your personal life deteriorates. These issues with staff, they're not only important. I think that's obvious. But they're also urgent. And by urgent, I mean it's a top three issue for the business. That must be solved. So given that they're urgent, we know already that they're trying to do things to get rid of the issues that they have with their staff. So in your experience, what is it are that they are probably already doing and why more often than not, the things, the things that they're doing are not working? So take us through that part of the story. They've tried and tried, and, the, and their head's getting mushy from hitting it on the wall so often. I've tried this. It's not working. I tried this. It's not working. I hired these people. It didn't work. I hired this consultant. It doesn't work, and their head's sore. And so the biggest thing that I have to address is, guess what? Most of your employees will not think like you. You're in the 1%. 1 or 2% of the population has the gumption and the drive to start their own business. But Russell, let, let's just take a step back because I want to come on to this point. Uh -huh. Take us back a step. And I'm interested in what is it that they're already doing? And be as specific as you can because yeah. they're not sitting around just going, woe is me. No. They're doing yeah. a variety of things to try to get their staff to perform the way they want them to perform. But you and I know that by and large, none of these things is working. So what are they doing and why don't the things that they're trying, why don't they work? Have you articulated a very clear purpose for your business, a why statement that Simon Sinek talks about? Have you gotten people excited about why you do things? Or are you just barking orders? Because particularly flat communications like email, text, Teams messaging, Slack, do not create that emotional connection with you and where you want the business to go. I've told them, I've told them, I've told them, I've sent emails, I've written up policies, I've made them read and sign handbooks, but they still don't seem to get it. And that's where you have to come in as a leader and say, this is why we do this. Come on board. This is great. This will change the world. This will change the business. Because I start at that very high level, a strategic level of why the heck is your business in business for how do you do things? What are your values? Are people doing things in a manner consistent with your values and how you would want them to get done? Because again, as opposed to, okay, I've sent out another email, I've held meetings, and I'm not getting my message across. It's because you're starting with your message at the grassroots level instead of the top of the, the communication chain.
Why am I here? How do I operate? What is it that I do? How do I fit into this organization? It's a completely different approach than our manual on accounts payable means that you have to do this within a certain amount of days and go to me if there's an approval. That has to be there, but it doesn't get things done. That's where the frustration is. You're pushing in the wrong direction. I think this point about lack of emotional resonance is just spot on. If you can't have that emotional connection between you and representing your business and the people that are working on it, it probably doesn't matter what you do. You can dot I's, you can cross T's, and the needle will not move because they are not engaged. They do not feel that they are part of the team who has a purpose that goes beyond themselves and, most importantly, beyond their paycheck. Now, take us into your insight into what the root cause really is that is behind this. And, you know, it's either something that your clients don't understand at all, or they think it's something that it's not, um, and they're just misinformed. So I always say it's either ignorance or they're misinformed, and that's why they're not making any progress. Take yeah. us through that. I think it's an awareness of that need to have that emotional connection. It's so easy, particularly in a lot of the scientific professions like engineering, programming, uh, accounting, where it's black and white, or there are certain set, this is the way you do things. And when you are creating something different, something new, you have a value-added proposition that doesn't exist and people stick with what they know, stick with the technical details. We've got to step back and say, I've got to engage this person's heart as well as their mind. And the brain is broken into three segments. And one of them is the emotional animal brain. And quite frankly, that's the one you have to convince. Then the rational brain will fall in line. And so when I work with these business owners, I point out how people make decisions, what they need to do. And, and then, as you said earlier, they need to look in the mirror. What am I? Why am I not communicating what I want? Did you know that 100 percent of the responsibility of communication is on the sender? It's not a 50 50 proposition. If you sent me an email and you typed my last name wrong, which happens every day, I don't get the email. And then I don't respond and you write me off. That doesn't work because you didn't communicate. You didn't make sure that communication was received. Then when you get the response back, then you begin to work on how can we mold that response to what we want. But you have to start with the sender of the communication, the owner of the business. That is uh, absolutely brilliant. So now that we understand what's really going on, what are the steps that I, as your ICP, I, as the owner of this business, what should I be doing that I probably haven't been doing because I didn't understand the root cause? One of the first questions I ask a business owner, what is your plan? What is your strategic plan? And they, they often have it here and they know it, they taste it, they sense it, they smell it, they live and breathe it every day, but it's not written down. So you start with writing down a why statement, a how statement, and a what statement. Thank goodness Simon Sinek nailed this in his Golden Circle talk, which is one of the most popular TED talks of all time. So I kind of follow his lead and say, let's document your why, how, and why. Let's get your employees involved in shaping that wordsmithing that not do you use this phrase or this phrase, but conceptually, let's get it in the hearts and minds, hearts and minds of the employees. And then when they come to work every day, you remind them. You have posters. Now, those go away pretty quickly. That third day after the poster's up, nobody's noticing it. But in your staff meetings, in your one-on-one -on -one communications, you always refer to your why. You know, I've got clients that have incredibly well-defined whys. And in every staff meeting, in every encounter, you know, what you're doing is inconsistent with our why. It's definitely inconsistent in our how, because you know what? How you do something is almost more important than what you do. And if those how you do things, your values are not consistent all the way through the organization, that's where the gaps and, and, and overlaps occur. So you start with writing down your why, how, and what. Now, what's the most important thing you want to work on? How have you assessed your company to determine on what's your number one priority? Because an, another teaching that I learned is uh, this strategic execution book uh, by the Covey Company. Chris McChesney and Sean Covey, they talk about have one thing to focus on. 
So I get them down to that one thing to focus on at a time and do that with energy, with passion and that connection. Then you get that in place. Then you set steps of different accountability meetings. I hate meetings. I run meetings for a living, but I hate meetings. And so when you have a meeting, I help business owners make those meetings an excellent use of time, not a task to perform. And there's some techniques that I work with the business owner to develop. Some work with some owners, not all of them work with every owner. It's very customized to their style, their needs. If I'm coaching Steve Jobs, I'm going to have a different set of agenda than I'm coaching uh, Bill uh, Gates because they're both brilliant. Bless his heart, Steve Jobs no longer with us, but they're brilliant, accomplished developers of huge companies. But they're very different. So you, one size does not fit all. So I have to sit with that business owner, get understanding of their style and mold that into a more effective method than just uh, what they've tried in the past. Well, you shared three key things that every small business owner absolutely needs to focus on. As you said, focus and be critical. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to learn a bit about Russell. You've spent over 20 years in corporate, and now you've stepped off the hamster wheel to run your own show as a fractional executive. Whether you're flying solo, leading a small firm, or running a boutique, Maven is your fast track to earning over $500,000 annually, and potentially more, without the grueling corporate hours. This is your shot at the freedom, flexibility, and independence you've worked so hard to achieve. By infusing your intellectual property into all aspects of your revenue generation, Maven transcends the limitations of other sales and marketing approaches. You'll have a pipeline so full that prospects who truly value what you bring to the table will be the ones knocking on your door. You'll work directly with Jay and Taz, who've led the way for over 30 years, helping countless executives make this leap. Contact j.kingley at fractionalmaven.com. Spots are limited, so act now to build the business and life you deserve. Welcome back. We're talking to Russell Lukadu, a fractional chief HR officer who works with owners of small businesses on all HR-related issues so they can grow their companies without all headaches come with having staff. Russell, let's find out a bit more about you. And I want to start with what happened in your life could be personal, could be professional, that most explains why you're doing what you do today. I grew up in a small family business, a little town in Western North Carolina. Uh, we ran a bicycle shop. My, my dad did that in the margins. He had a day job, but we worked nights and weekends running this bicycle shop. Uh, it was called the bikery. Doesn't exist anymore. My dad passed, but I remember us wanting to take family vacations, going camping as a family. We couldn't go camping as a family because somebody needed to stay in mind the shop. And my, I watched my father have difficulty getting people he would trust to hand the keys to the business and the cash box. And his need to trust people, to delegate, to set clear instructions was always a hindrance. We either closed or somebody had to stay behind. And this brother often was the one who got to stand behind. Um, and I resented that. So, yeah, I was driven into how do we get the, these small business owners to get the help they need so they can have a life. And so I think that's that's what triggered it and has driven me. I always have my dad's picture in my head when I'm talking to these business owners going, I get it. I understand. I was personally impacted by what you're facing. Well, we call that having passion for your purpose. And that yeah. is a winning ticket for sure. I said, I don't plan to retire. I love what I'm doing. Maybe cut back, but not retire. You and me both, Russell. What's one thing that very few people know about you that if they did know, they would find it surprising? Well, I'm a political junkie, not getting into politics on this, but I'm probably the only American you've ever met who's met and shaken hands with five Canadian prime ministers. Canadian for an American. Yeah. I, would, I would bet that you are right. Now, yep. now, for 10 bonus points, two per prime minister, name them. Brian Maroney, Jean Chrétien, William Clark, Pierre Trudeau, and Justin Trudeau. Well, you had good premonition uh, on <laughs> that. That's outstanding. So what's next for you over the coming 12 months? 
continued working with clients, seeing my clients get successful, seeing them have a, a life and for them to refer more clients to me. So my absolute favorite way to get clients is referral from existing clients. But personally, I plan to move somewhere else where there's palm trees, maybe a little less expensive. Jay, maybe you've got a house in your neighborhood for sale because I'll never live with a palm trees and within an hour of the, of the ocean. And, and that probably will happen in the next year. Los Angeles is a great city. But it's a little expensive to live here. So. Indeed. I know we're going to have people in our audience that are going to find what you have to say compelling and will cause them to want to reach out and begin a conversation with you. Russell, what's the best way for them to do that? Go to uh, the hrguy.biz or email me at answers at the hrguy.biz. I will put those links in our show notes, make it easy for everyone. No excuses not to reach out to Russell. Russell, I want to thank you for being a guest on our Fractionals Unplugged show. Thank Be you sure to subscribe to both our podcast on all the major platforms and our YouTube channel for our videos. Until next time, make an impact on your clients, family, on your terms. Securing your independence with the freedom, flexibility, and control that you've earned.